Hey guys, I'm going to be doing um, the Daymaker headlight conversion for the Kawasaki Vaquero. Um, I, when I filmed the video, I was doing it in real time, so I was making mistakes, and um, as you'll see. Um, the biggest mistake I made um, is the, the new ring and the uh, old ring, they need to be staggered in such a way that the, there's the back plate of the new ring, the old ring and then the front plate of the new ring um, and you'll see that better in the video but that's a big one um, the, the reason that's it needs to be set up that way is to give you more adjustment um, so with that disclaimer out of the way um, the reason I did this video is some of the, um, the the forums that I've seen guys are doing this and they're just taking the front portion of the new ring and bolting it onto the old ring which negates any adjustment that you would have. And without that adjustment, um, your headlight could be, you know, pointed wherever, but you're not going to be able to fine tune it to, to get full use of your headlight. So the way that um, I'm doing it is getting the, uh, the adjustment so you can point the headlight where you need to. So hope you guys enjoy the video. Like I said, there's a handful of mistakes throughout there. Um, I tried to speed up. You know, just me fiddling with the screwdriver. But most of it's just going to be ad lib as I was going. So, uh, hope you guys enjoy it. If you have any questions, hit me down below. All right. Hey, guys. We're uh, going to be doing the Daymaker mod on my 2014 Vaquero. This is going to cover all Vaqueros because they haven't changed. Um, I'm going to jump in here. And all I've done so far is taken off the headlight bezel which that's just that little allen bolt there i haven't done anything else yet and i was like wait stop videotape it i don't remember what size it was i already put the wrench down but let's go ahead and set you up there all right so once the bezel's off got uh looks like one two three four eight millimeter screws Was able to get a, a genuine, a genuine daymaker for a good price, and I was uh, not going to do the LED upgrade because they didn't have a modulator for the the LED the daymaker style headlight, and I like to have that modulator during the daytime because they actually do work, and uh, I didn't want to lose that, but. Found company that makes them for those. I'll link in the description. Alright, so those four bolts are out. Headlight pops right out. Let's go ahead and unplug it here. <clears throat> of course, I'll be removing my uh, old flash a relay for the the standard I guess incandescent light and I will be trying to pull out my glued in place sensor I had the sensor mounted right here probably can't see that very well but anyway there it is um, the new company doesn't actually have you drill a hole in your headlight housing, which is cool. But now that we got that out of there, I'll worry about getting this out in a minute. I'll do that off camera. Anyway, so what we need is the headlight. <clears throat> we need the Daymaker headlight, obviously. And we need this new universal bezel ring. But we're going to have to do some modifications. So I'm going to pause you here. And we'll pick up inside my office where it's a little warmer. Alright guys, I kind of messed up there. And the camera wasn't pointed correctly at me. So there's several screws to undo to get the headlight out. 
Then I, there's four little plastic uh, rivets. I took those out. You probably don't have to take this off to do the mod that we're going to do, but I think it's out of the way, so not going to kill you. And then the last thing is this, um, the, the one, one attachment point here to get this adjustment bracket off of here. Thing off. These two tabs here. The side tabs. Don't cut off the bottom tab. That's your mounting tab. And then we need to attach Looks like we'll have to cut this guy off of here too for the uh, the one spring adjustment. Now these are spot welded on. I'll probably better off drilling them out. Instead of using a grinder. Oh well, yeah, we're gonna cut those off. Okay. All right, so like I said, I'm gonna drill out these four spot welds. And we are gonna have to weld the new ring onto the old ring. So that'll take a little bit of finagling to get perfectly straight. It's a new day. Been running into some problems with the septic tank. But here we are. I took off that last little nub that was on here. So all three of the spot welded on brackets are gone. This is still there. And for this, what we're going to do. is we're going to cut off this bracket and this guy here so we're going to trim those down And before someone jumps on me about not using goggles, they're not your eyes. They're my eyes. Let's get the shape. File those down a little bit. All right. So we're going to align, put the headlight back in. And we're going to kind of orient this all to the way I want it specifically. Get everything kind of dialed in here just perfect with the, uh, the up and down and side to side in here. So everything's nice and perfect and good to go. I'm going to uh, probably do four little one inch welds and then move on to the next step. So the way we have this, you can read the word normally looking at it. We've got one adjustment point up top, and then the two down here at, oh, let's say 4 o'clock and 9 o'clock. So we have adjustment at 12 o'clock, 4 o'clock, and 9 o'clock. Which that seems a little weird to me, but they're not evenly spaced. So I guess that's what we got to deal with. All right, so now that I know that goes up, so 
looks like. Yep. So on the original ring, this being the bottom, this is at the perfect 12 o'clock position, so we can use that as an indexing mark. And then the two tabs that we cut off are 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock position. So we'll weld, or rather, you can see the cutoff tab lines up with that. This bolt, as well as the cutoff tab, line up with this slot that was at the 12 o'clock. Okay. Before I weld this down, I'm going to try and use the original The original chrome ring lines up with these three holes here. So I want to try and keep the new ring out of the way of these original chrome ring holes. So I'll mark them. All right, one final lineup. Get everything dialed in here. I'm kind of using the holes in the new plate and lining those up with it inner diameter of the original ring. So everything's nice and even. Yeah. Powder coating on the new ring is kind of flaring up on me. Recently saw you can rent welders from Home Depot. Didn't know that. It looked like a little 165 uh, uh, Lincoln. I don't know if the 165 is a 220 or a 110. We're not going to worry a whole ton about all this, how nasty this looks right now. We're going to hit it with some spray paint or uh, maybe I'll uh, sandblast it and have it powder coated. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. Well, it's a little warm right now. We're going to let this cool. But um, because the this new spring plate sticks out so far, we're going to have to clip a couple of the coils off of these adjustment springs so we can suck this down. Not all the way because we still want some adjustment. But... Um, probably half as close as it is now so another quarter inch in we'll clip those um, I don't know maybe three coils off of it and then suck it into that three quarter or a quarter inch range and then um, put the the new black bezel on there that or uh, 
the headlight ring that holds in the LED headlight. And we're also going to retain this, but we'll have to um, get some. You can either weld nuts onto the back of the old ring or get some nut zerts if you have a nut zert tool. Which are these little guys. If you don't know what they are, they don't slip into the hole and then you use your nut zert rivet tool, squeeze them down. This little area compresses down and uh, kind of gives you a, a, a nut plate, more or less. Uh, I've got some for some number 10s. I might use that. I would like to keep it metric, however, uh, just because everything else on the bike is metric. So, But that's kind of going to depend on what I find in my toolbox as far as if I have any more hardware laying around. So... Uh, I'm going to pause it here, let this cool down, and then come back to you. All right, we're back. Taking off the three bolts here, adjustment screws. Get some springs out of here. All right, so like I said, I'm going to cut off three coils so starting from the top where they touch one two and three the problem with cutting off coils is someone moved my lineman flyer if you have a bench grinder you can just grind it down or if you have a Angle grinder, you can do it this way, or a drummer will cut off wheel, or any one of a million different ways of doing this. Right, well, let's put this guy back on. Okay, now like I said, I'm going to suck these in as far as I can. Now the the, um, the lock ring for this light has three little screws. So obviously we can't uh, suck this in too far. We won't be able to screw those little screws in. Well, I guess we could just trim those screws down. You know, I messed up on this. I should have taken the original ring and put it in front of the new ring to kind of set this back that, I mean, it's a sixteenth of an inch, but that would help a little bit with the spacing out. Ultimately, I don't think it's really going to matter. Hopefully. But, um, yeah, if you want just a little bit more setback. It's not outside the realm of possibility for me to cut that out and fix it, which I might do. I think I'm going to trim these screws down. They, uh, they come out almost that full quarter inch there, so I'm losing a lot of adjustment. You probably notice I haven't painted it yet. I'm just test fitting everything right now, anyway. 
yeah you can see that screw is impacting that face plate there so we are definitely which that's one reason this being the new plate being behind the old plate would help it would clearance a little bit more for that screw but that's also why I'm going to trim that screw so here's all this we got our chrome ring here and I just kind of want that to kind of because it's going to fill up a whole lot of the gap inside the bezel otherwise we'd be losing like oh geez I don't know a quarter of an inch so it would you know it probably wouldn't be that big a deal but for some might see it as an eyesore to not have it I think I'm going to have this powder coated black however um, once this is all said and done but for now what we're going to do is get some spring material you can buy spring stock at the hardware store cheap enough Like I said, um, I'd rather use metric, but I have some number 10s laying around. I'm just going to use nuts, actual nuts, for now, because I do... I'm probably going to wind up taking this apart and putting that plate on the proper side. So I don't want to have to drill out any nut zerts. But, I'm just sandwiching... The spring between the two plates. Now that what that spring is going to do is keep it from uh, keeping tension on the screw so it'll keep it from backing out. There we are. So a provisional final product. Now let's go install it. Now I've removed the old modulator. Uh, the old one for the incandescent lights, if anyone's interested, the uh, Diamond Star. I love these things. You know, they, they really do make a difference. I've had several bikes, and this was um, getting that installed on there on any of the bikes. Is, there's been, I mean, it, it shows a, a marked improvement of people not pulling out in front of you. Okay, so black, uh, black is on the right, that's ground. The only thing I dislike about this new one is it doesn't come with the connection. I think that's, uh, because these are standard, no matter what. It's always ground, uh, low, high. So you should give me the male connector, because this never changes. But I guess such is life. Okay, yellow, and then white for the high beam over here on the left. Now, for my bike, um, this little module, there's a little, little bar right here that I just put some Velcro on. And then I just Velcro it to the inside of there. Works real good. And then this just gets zip tied up against something. So we'll... Uh, It needs to be ex somewhat exposed to light. The manual or the instruction sheet kind of has you zip tie it to a brake line or whatever. So I'm just going to dangle this down here for now because I still have to get the Velcro. Now, of course, what I forgot to do is put a connector on this end. So I'll be right back. Okay, so for the sake of brevity, I just clip or uh, crimp these on here. Normally, I would solder. Um, and also, if you get the a different variety or, or the the Chinese variety of these, it's already going to have the three prong connector on there anyway. Uh, but if it doesn't, you can look all the way inside the bulb. And it's going to say high. 
this is the bigger one, or I guess the lower one's the high beam. But if you look all the way in there, and directly below the LED itself, it actually says on the circuit card, high beam. It doesn't say it on the low beam, but process of elimination. So, now, like I said, the top is always low. Okay, top is low. Left is high. Right is ground. I'm also going to, for those of you that don't have the connector, I'll, I'm going to find um, one on Amazon, link it down. I'm also going to buy it myself. That's why I just crimped this on instead of soldering it. Since we can't get all this jammed up in here without making it. Okay, what I discovered is I'm actually going to have to use those um, nut zerts because the nuts that I put on here are too big to go inside the, the holes in the fairing. So I'm going to go ahead and take all this apart, flip it around the way I want it, and then I'll be back. All right. Today's video is brought to you by the word bumblefuck. So I, I cut and rewelded the plate, and the new ring is now sitting behind the original ring. And of course, my nut rivet tool is missing a crucial part. So I have the nut rivet in there and I'll just have to uh, find a buddy with a tool or go buy a new one. But all the parts are in there now and should all be in the right orientation. So again, ground to the right, low on top and high on the left. Again, this is going to get a new plug and we're going to Velcro this in here how I like it. And this whole plate's going to get powder coated. So we're not actually done. But we are done enough to install it for today. Now, let's get our eight bolts in there. I clocked the tone ring or the, the bezel ring wrong. Alright, like we said, we're gonna powder coat the whole ring assembly and then the the outer chrome ring. So I really don't care what it looks like right this second. Of course, a smart, smart guy tests it before he does the final install, right? <clears throat> All right, here we go. I'm not getting any flashing. Oh, there we go. Okay, so it only flashes when it's in. and high beam. That's kind of interesting. One thing I do notice is I'm getting some feedback through my stereo. Um, that might be through the Bluetooth only. Nope, it's coming through on the stereo too. might be background electrical noise but at any rate flashes works all right well once we get all that cleaned up I think it uh, it'll be good
I know this has been a long video, guys. I'm going to try and edit it and speed up certain sections as I go. But, you know, it, it's about a couple hour process, um, especially if you have to redo stuff twice. Um, if you're all set up and you're ready to go and you got everything you need, um, like I said, everything will be down there in the, in the description, um, with the exception of metric zert, um, nut, uh, zert nuts, because I don't know what size I'm going to wind up using. Right now I'm using number eight uh, standard. And I might just leave it as number eight standard because it's on a standard screw tip, so it doesn't need to be metric. But um, yeah, so what you need to buy, obviously, the headlight, the bezel ring. Um, well, the new the new headlight ring, not bezel, but um, headlight, new ring, um, some some Zert nuts of whatever variety, and if your headlight doesn't come pre-wired with a cannon plug on it. Um, the cannon plug below and if you're interested in getting the flashing relay that'll also be below so have fun guys